Hello people, me again. Uh, right, today, well, lots of things today. I'm going to do, uh, just double check the brushes on a Lucas alternator out of the Range Rover Classic. I think this was an ACL 11, maybe, I don't know. Quite a low um, output alternator, not particularly uh, beefy, but Lucas all the same. Um, Prince of Darkness, get home before dark or before it rains. Right, let me just... Um, Try and get this so you can see what's going on here. Right, alternator, fairly simple device. Engine winds the pulley on the front. AC is generated inside, DC comes out the back. Um, that's the main thing behind it. You don't need to know much more than that. What happens though is the brushes on the back of the alternator do wear out from time to time. The regulator in the dio pack also breaks down. Um, there's lots of things that might go wrong with them, but there's other videos on YouTube that will um, show you how to check for those things. So, first and foremost, let's get the black cover off the back of the alternator, so plastic cover. The rest of this thing doesn't need to come apart, so don't worry about these nuts here that split the two halves of the alternator. You don't need to do that. I'm just going to take the back cover off. So, two nuts. There's one in there. There's one in there. Quite. Use my trusty Bosch electric screwdriver. One. And two. Those feathers are off. Cover comes off, and underneath here we can see the workings. So in the middle here, we've got like regulator, we've got diode packs, and under these areas here are where the brushes are. Now there's four screws there for the brushes. Um, in order to check them, what I would be inclined to do is to undo the two either side, which actually holds the whole brush module down onto the top of the uh, alternator. So if I undo these. One second. Well, I'll say one second, maybe four. Whoops, there's an earth lead that attaches to that one. And that one there. And then what you find is underneath we've got the contact ring. So we've got the centre and the outside. Those are the two contact rings. And inside this cap you can see the two brushes. They're both spring-loaded. You can see one's worn slightly more than the other in this case. Now, if I wanted to go any further than this, I would disconnect the whole pack from the back of the alternator. There's the alternator now without that part connected. And on the top of the alternator, we might then consider undoing these four, and under there you'll find the springs and the brushes. It's up to you whether you go that far. Let me take one off just to show you what it is you're looking at. So, there's one. When you take these things apart, just make a mental note of where the wires go. So obviously the brushes need to make a circuit. So the yellow wire and the orange wire go to the same brush. Now if I take the cover off here, you'll see there's quite a long spring will come out followed by what I would class as a healthy looking brush. Now you may well find that when you replace this you have to replace just the brush component. That might be a bit of a faff because what you're going to have to do then is to drill a hole through here, bring the wire through and find some way of securing it onto the bracket. If you're buying it from Lucas I would imagine you would buy it with the bracket and everything attached. Both of these brushes are exactly the same. Um, so they've both got exactly the same bracket on the top and then to pop it back together again, we'll push the brush back in. We'll put one screw in just to hold it down so it's not going to misbehave. Still got my bloody cold. I'm having a wonderful time with it. I went to Belfast last week. I had a fantastic time there. Proper crack. Um, and um, I think I picked up the bug on the plane on the way home. Um, I don't know why I've not had a cold in years, but then I've not flown in years. Flying's not natural, is it? I don't understand it. Anyway, I'm a dinosaur, really. Um, right, okay, so let me... Right, so I've secured the brush back onto the top of the module. Just double check, they're both springing, they're both free, they're both moving, and then to re install back to the alternator all I need to do 
is to line it up with the base plate. So if I push that down, you will see it lines up on the screw holes here. So two screw holes, two bolts to secure it back in. Start them off with this and then go on to trusty. That's gravity for you. Don't you love gravity? I love gravity. Gravity is really useful. Right, okay. Gravity, thank you. I'm going to do it again now, you watch. Right, okay, I didn't have that time. Right, I'm just making sure everything's lined up here. I'm not going to nip it right up. Make sure you put the wires back on. So there's an earth wire that went to this terminal. I'm going to make sure it goes back on there. Oops, I've tightened it up too tight. There we are. Now it's loose. I can put the second wire in. And that goes down. Just holding... And the other wire, of course, is the positive, which I need to put back onto the uh, uh, diode pack at the front here. Okay, so the diode pack um, sits here, and it's these series of plates. Sometimes the diode packs don't look like that. Um, in fact, here's another example of diode packs from uh, an AC Delco um, uh, alternator. This is a more recent Range Rover. I've kept this because um, it works. The rest of the alternator was lunched. Uh, but the diode pack was good, so I've hung on to this as a spare just in case I ever lose a diode pack on another alternator that goes on the shelf. And then on a much newer Range Rover, again, you've got the regulator and the brush components which go on to the slip rings. Um, how can you see that? You can see that there. So that, that would be the middle of the alternator that would go through there where my pinky is. Um, and that's how they work. Clever stuff, eh? Right, so we've done this classic alternator, this classic Lucas alternator. We've screwed it back up. Screwed it up. We've double-checked that the wires are still located, so we've got the orange, the yellow, going to the same terminal. It's insulated from the other brush. There's no way that the two brushes bridged. They're not in contact with each other. The earth wire is going back to there. Done all that, and let's put the cover back on now, and then that is it. So if you wanted to replace brushes... This is not um, rocket science. This is not something that you need to um, rush out and buy a new alternator for. And in fact, you'll find... Sorry. Most faults that you'll ever get with an alternator are when you occasionally get the charge light come on in your dash. If you've got a more modern car, you may find that the whole dash lights up like a Christmas tree. Um, let's put this in. You can hear me. You may find that the whole dash lights up like a Christmas tree because the alternator is not putting out the required voltage um, to uh, run the car electrics and also charge the battery. Um, and because of that, there's insufficient current within the car's electric system to run things like, I don't know, ABS pumps and power steering and electric power steering and all these other bits and bobs. So modern cars are much more reliant on an alternator than a classic car. Um, so much so that a modern car will often go into limp mode if there's a problem with the alternator. You can check the output of the alternator really across the battery terminals as long as the rest of the wiring is okay. If you're getting 13.7 or thereabouts volts, um, but not much more than about 14.2-ish, I mean, check your manuals, then the alternator should be functioning fine. Um, and it should be putting out a reasonable voltage um, f immediately from startup. If you're not getting that, you can check the voltage by taking a voltage directly off the terminal on the back here. So you, you, you'll have a plug that goes onto the back, you pull the plug off, put your vomiter onto there and to earth, either earth on the engine or earth on the battery, and you can find out whether you've got a dodgy earth, could be an engine earth that's not working properly, or various other factors. Don't discount the alternator and have to replace it just because you get a, a dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree. You may then find that if the alternator is not putting out the required current, um, it just needs a set of brushes which I've just shown you on this classic Lucas alternator. Uh, on newer alternators, the same. This one here, um, you can't really do an awful lot with it. You just buy that module as a module with brushes in it. I don't see any way of getting the brushes out of it. They're all moulded into it, and you just buy that unit. Um, whether that unit is cheaper than buying a whole alternator, which I'd be surprised if it was, um, you, you know, it's debatable. You've got bearings in the alternator which have got a certain life to them. Uh, the ones in this, 
whisper quiet. I mean, look at it go. That's a happy bearing, that is. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty of stuff on, on YouTube around alternators, but I just thought I'd show you one about classic uh, Lucas alternator, because this is uh, about the only alternator that's not that widely represented. Anyway, that was it. Bye.